Hey guys, it's Kelsey. I'm back with another scrapbooking process video and today I have a double feature for you guys. I really wanted to show you guys how to get a lot of uh, full size 4x6 pictures scrapped. So this first page is a normal scrapbook page. I'm getting two of my 4x6s used up. And the second page is going to be a lot quicker, a way you can use up a lot of photos uh, and have it coordinate to the first page using scraps. So. Hopefully this will be fun and really helpful for those of you who like getting a lot of photos on a page. Um, this works really well because this page is going to have a lot more of the detail, the fun embellishment, more of a design. And then with using scraps from this page on the next page, that's more photo heavy. They can still coordinate. I can still do a cute little embellishment cluster, uh, but it'll be a really quick, easy page. Um, that will just coordinate with this one. So that's my goal on this one. I have these two photos of Gorion. He's one of the uh, stallions from uh, Cavalia Edisio. He's the horse that does the fancy dressage in that final scene. Um, he has the longest mane in the barn. It actually touches the floor. <laughs> He's a Spanish purebred stallion. And he, uh, we always have to keep his mane braided, as you can see in the bottom photo, because he will just step on it <laughs> uh, all day if we don't. Uh, but I have one photo um, right after they took out this braid, so you could really see how long it was not braided. <laughs> it gets really thin towards the bottom, so you can't really see it touching the ground, but believe it or not, it's touching the ground with him standing with his head up. Um, and then you can kind of see in the second photo how they do a, a quick braid um, to keep it out of the way. And that way when it hangs down, it doesn't touch the ground, even though it's still very long. <laughs> and it kind of stays out of, uh, out of the way of his feet. So I wanted to record that because his mane is just to die for. He by far has the prettiest mane in the barn. <laughs> um, and I kind of had this before and after, so I thought it was a good chance to document his hair. So I am using, I believe this is Prima Marketing uh, Rose Quartz, I want to say. Um, really beautiful collection. Kind of a lot of grays and pinks and purples, kind of more monochromatic. And I already had a bunch of fussy cut feathers from this collection. And I do have the die cut pack for this collection. So I thought it would be a really good chance to do cute little embellishment clusters pretty quickly because I already had everything cut. Um, I don't have a whole lot left of this collection. So I just went with the... Plain marbly, it's kind of watercolory marble uh, background page. And then I'm just trying to use a couple of the scraps I already had from this collection. And I'm going to just mat these photos together on this big uh, floral paper and then run this light wood grain horizontally just because I had that scrap to use. <laughs> uh, and that way it kind of gives me a horizontal anchor to build off of with some of these embellishments. So I'm just going through and pulling apart all of these uh, feathers I'd already die cut from another uh, <laughs> pattern paper from this collection and I'm trying to figure out a little embellishment cluster. I know I want to build off to the left here onto this little wood grain shelf. Uh, so I'm thinking maybe if I could use one of these pocket cards and then layer up a couple feathers, that would be a cute little cluster. I have this one heart uh, pocket card that says, I love you, I love you, I love you a bunch of times, or I heart you. <laughs> um, and I thought if I fussy cut that into the actual heart, it would be a really nice um, kind of focal point for my little cluster down there. So I'm gonna have that sit there for a minute and I already know I'm going to incorporate some of those feathers. I felt like it was looking a little plain though and because there's a lot of white and light and kind of airy pattern papers with this collection, I wanted to pull in a doily. So I think that gives a nice background for this little cluster down here. And now I'm just trying to figure out what feathers I wanna use. I just wanna tuck a couple in um, behind this pocket card. At this point, I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it a square pocket card or if I'm actually going to fussy cut it into a heart. Um, but once I kind of figure out my feathers, I'm like, yeah, I think it'll look nicer fussy cutting this heart so there's not so many corners. Um, and I end up liking that a lot better. <laughs> but I'm just going to figure out what feathers I want first and then I'll decide uh, I'm going to fussy cut this card. <laughs> and I'm actually going to leave kind of a thicker border because I do like this spotted background that's around the heart and I want to keep a little bit of that detail. So I think that's really cute. <laughs> I'm gonna save the scrap of that pocket card just in case I wanna punch anything else out of that spotted paper, uh, but I don't think I end up doing that. So I really think that's really cute, having the heart and those feathers. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue down this little cluster. That orange bit on the back of this is foam. I've already tried to get these feathers on multiple other pages. <laughs> so some of them already have foam on the back from where I wanted them to have some more dimension. Um, which is nice for me here because it's just already done. <laughs> uh, but that way you can kind of see that that top feather does have some dimension, so it's popped up a little bit. 
Um, I think that looks really cute. And then I'm also trying to figure out, I just want another layer to kind of beef it up a little bit, but I don't want it to be heavy or distracting. So I have a scrap of some vellum I used on a previous page. So I'm just gonna cut that into a fishtail banner and tuck that behind the doily along this wood grain. I think that's a really soft, beautiful extra layer. <laughs> and I think that was just the perfect uh, detail I needed to kind of beef up that area. And now I'm going through my die cuts. I definitely want to try and get a couple die cuts on both of these pages I'm doing today just because I'm really down on this collection and I don't want to finish the paper and then have a bunch of the ephemera left over uh, and it'd be difficult to use. So I'm going to go ahead and get this cute little delightful tag um, popped up over that last feather down there. And I think that kind of completes that cluster really nicely. And now I want to focus on a second embellishment cluster. Um, on the opposite side of the photos just so it's framed nicely and it's balanced so I'm pulling in some more of those feathers um, I'll go into my die cuts again and try and figure out something else I can use over there <laughs> but I'm just trying to get a couple feathers to tuck out from the side over here just so there's a little bit of detail and some interest so I'm just trying to layer them up and again I want the top feather to have some dimension just so it's not all flat and there's some um, texture <laughs> So I am going to layer a couple there. And then there's this purple ticket, which again, I thought was perfect. I have a bunch of tickets in um, several of the collections I'm using this month. And because this is essentially a circus show, I thought tickets, this is like the best time to get them used up in a literal way. <laughs> so anytime I have a ticket in a collection, I'm gonna try and use it up while I'm working with my Cavalia Odysseo pages. So I do have that purple ticket in that secondary cluster. And then for my title, I decided just to title it Gorion because that's the horse's name. It's pretty obvious from the photo that you're looking at his incredible mane. Uh, so I don't feel like I really need to say too much, uh, but I do want to make sure I note the horse's name just because there's a ton of horses in this barn. <laughs> and even though I can still pretty much remember who's who, I don't know in a couple years if I will be able to, so I wanna make sure I have that logged. And then I was just looking kind of empty to the right of the photo. Um, it was just kind of looking too bare. I wanted something over there. So you will see I actually go back uh, and find a scrap in this collection and cut a tag to kind of branch out up from the secondary cluster with the ticket over the top of the corner next to the title. So it all kind of flows together and it's not um, disconnected how it is now. <laughs> um, so yeah, I found this black, this kind of mottled black scrap from the same collection. So I'm just going to trim that into a tag and I think that's perfect. It also kind of draws your eye up there. It's very light and airy, a lot of white on white on this page. So having that darker element kind of helps ground <laughs> that area of the page because right now you don't see the title right away, which I do like how soft the title is. Um, but having that tag up there just kind of fixes all the issues that I'm having with it design wise right now. So I'm gonna get this uh, tag trimmed. I glued a white hole reinforcer and then I just threaded it with some golden white twine because my little tag that says delightful in the other cluster has golden white twine. So now that's also balanced. Uh, and then I was thinking about maybe creating more uh, of a cluster up here, but it was just kind of looking busy. I really didn't need more than that. <laughs> but I did want to just journal a tiny bit on this black tag next to the title. I end up writing AKA best hair so that it reads Gorian AKA best hair. And I really feel like that's all I have to say about these photos. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out if I wanna do more layers. I'm really trying to get more of the <laughs> embellishment used up, but I end up just kind of sticking with what I have. The only thing I add is my last row of these mirrored um, faux enamel dots. They look really cool. They're very like silvery and they look kind of mirrored and I think that looks really cool. Uh, so I am going to just get that last row used up in three separate clusters and that's pretty much this page. I do go around, I don't know if you saw, I inked the edges of everything in the beginning in black. Um, so that's something I'll carry over into my next page, just kind of having to edge things in black. But this is the first page, so as you can see, um, a lot more embellishment and some clusters on here. Your focal points are on this page and then once I flip over to <laughs> this other page, it's going to be really quick. I'm just going to get four full sized four by sixes and a cool embellishment cluster using scraps from this page. And that way I have two companion pages, both done pretty quickly, but using a lot of photos. So uh, here are your close ups for this page. And then we will get going on the companion page. So 
The companion page isn't about Gorion, but it's just about more of the horses. <laughs> I have a ton of photos from when I worked with Cavalia Odysseo just of horses. Um, so I'm really trying to do multi-photo pages because it would just be ridiculous having like <laughs> hundreds of pages of just um, each horse. So I'm really trying to cram a lot of them together on a page. I am going to use another 12 by 12 as my um, frame for this page, but I'm just going to mat it in a plain black and then I will fill this hole with a plain black um, because there's going to be so many photos on here. I really don't need to waste all that pattern paper that's going to be behind everything. So like I said, because I inked the pages on the last page, I wanted to mat this in black just so I kind of have that same idea. And then here are my four photos. This design works really well if you have two landscape and two uh, portrait photos. I'm just going to create a square with them. <laughs> and you'll see by the way I layer them, there's going to be a hole in the middle of this page. And that's where I'm going to have my embellishment cluster. Uh, so I'm just going to get them matted on black as well. I really wanted to replicate the black edging on this page through my mats. So I'm just gluing these all down <laughs> and then I'll trim up this mat and that's going to be plonked in the middle of that page. Um, so really quick and easy. Um, these photos are just of a couple of the Arabians in the show. They have a bunch of Arabians. You'll see them mainly in the last scene after Gorian does his wonderful dressage exhibition and there's a whole water scene. They flood the arena with water and they dance through water. It's amazing. If you haven't seen Cavalier Odysseo, YouTube a trailer of it after this because it's such an amazing, amazing show. Um, but they have all the Arabians running through the water. Um, and so these are just a couple of them I wanted to record. <laughs> um, that top left corner I'm snuggling with, I believe that's Gigi. And then uh, below is a photo of th three of the Arabians with their head out of the stalls. So Gigi's the first one. <laughs> and then next you have Lover and the one after that I believe is Chief. Um, and then the two horses on the right, those are both Lover. Um, the bottom right hand photo, I caught a picture of him mid yawn and he just looked ridiculous. So I had to scrap it. The other photo, <sighs> I don't know what I was doing. I was annoying him apparently because his ears are pinned back and I'm kind of surprised he didn't bite me. I'm looking at this photo and I was like, Kelsey, what are you doing? Like, I'm lucky he didn't bite my face off because lover is not a lover. Um, if you remember me talking about him from a previous scrapbook page, but he's not happy in that photo. Anyways, I just wanted to record all of them and all these moments. I'm really just focusing on creating a really cool embellishment cluster in the middle of this page where I had that blank black spot. And all I'm doing is pulling in ephemera bits and scraps that I used from the first page. Uh, so because I have the the shift of the show. It's later at night, so I, I included a coffee cup just because um, I always kind of have coffee since we work later when it's showtime. Uh, and then I'm just throwing on a bunch of other embellishments. So I'm just creating a fun little cluster. And this is really all I have to do on this page. I'm not really trying to make this one super designy because it's going right next to that other page that does have design. So next to each other, your eye has places to go. Um, not every page has to be a masterpiece. I feel like a lot of people, uh, me included, will put a lot of pressure on ourselves to make each and every page just like a design masterpiece. And sometimes it's okay to just have a photo heavy page that isn't super designed. So I really wanted to showcase that with this double feature and kind of have two different examples. Um, one where you kind of do have more and then this one. So hopefully that's helpful. I did just want to do um, a little bit of journaling with my stamps. I didn't want to really use alphas or anything. I thought it'd be too distracting, but since I did use black ink on the first page, I'm just going to go ahead and stamp my title uh, or my journaling, whichever you want to call it, with these little letter stamps. So the top I said the Arabian boys, the bottom I just labeled the horses Chief Lover and Gigi so I could remember who was who. But that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.